Hey, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Alex and this is Josh. Hi. And today we're actually in Ashland, Ohio yes. uh, at a Boy Scout meetup, right? Yep, that's a really good thing about summer times is you got lots of camps and you got a lot of people with free time on their hands to uh, do some really special things. Yeah, and now you, you've been doing uh, flying ministries and flying groups for longer than you've been doing flight tests, that's for sure. Yeah, that's where the model actually was found. So what exactly do we have going on here today? What are we going to be doing with the kids? We're learning more every time we go to a different location, and also we're being blessed with more and more great people coming to the works. Uh, we got an invitation by a wonderful gentleman who is currently working right now. There he is. <laughs> we got a wonderful invitation by this wonderful gentleman here. What's your what's your scout group's name? For the uh, Pac-126 of Belleville. Ohio. Pack 126. And then how many kids are here? Well, right now, with all the various groups here, we have almost 70, wow, 70 scouts. children. It's a lot of kids. Now, yes. one thing that's a major challenge when you have 70 kids, you can't just entertain everyone at once. So we did a couple things, and it's something you guys can do too. The idea to have an easy, successful, quick demonstration for about three hours is to divide up the kids and make stations. And that's what we're going to do today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so why don't we go over a couple of different things we yeah. got. We have our ground station, which you guys may have seen in an old episode. Epic ground station. Uh, we brought a bunch, as many goggles as we could find. The more screens that you can have the kids pass around, the better. And one thing to keep in mind with goggles, it's wonderful to give someone an amazing immersive experience, but monitors are a little bit more sturdy, and also more kids can see it at one time. So oftentimes we'll have one set of goggles floating around, but then we'll also have uh, TVs going. This one has the Connex system. You guys probably saw our Connex on the multi-rotor. We put it in the Kraken this time so we can fly up. And Alex, you're going to be flying multi-rotors, Yeah, right? we're going to have a couple different things in the air at once. Um, all FPV so the kids can watch either up in the sky or on the monitors, which is cool, cool experience for the little ones. we have going on here is we have some simulators. So the simulators are really great to hold people's attention uh, when they're not either watching the monitors or flying, they can hone their skills. Uh, another thing we're going to be doing, and I think is really important, is training. Uh, we didn't know what the weather was going to be like, and unfortunately our foam board models don't always behave in the rain. So we brought down the, uh, the BIX-3 with a wireless buddy cable. If you guys have a wireless system, Super it changes nice. everything. Not even touching the controls, you're doing this. So, one thing if you notice here, Lee is going quite a distance away to, uh, to retrieve that. It doesn't matter if you can put it at your feet or not. Whenever you're flying with kids, land it far, far away, have someone go retrieve it. Preferably not one of the children or else I'll fight over it. But uh, land it far away because you never know who's around that you may not see. So distance is your friend. For the final station, we're going to be following with, up with Heath. And he's going to be demonstrating and showing kids the science behind helicopters. And one big thing, is every extra volunteer you have, whether it's flying planes or helicopters, have a, uh, a boundary layer. Have an area where the, there's no children or adults able to pass in a safe landing zone and takeoff zone, and also an emergency zone. And spotters, too. And spotters for everybody. One of our biggest desires is not for us to just personally do this, but to enable other uh, clubs, groups uh, to do this and reach out, especially Boy Scouts, schools, 
uh, local community centers. This is a great hobby. Mm -hmm. And if you can plant that seed of fascination and get people into the hobby, yep. it goes home to their families. And when it goes home, the families are creating memories together. And that's what our passion is all about. Yep. So one of the main things you want to consider is uh, bringing multiples of everything. We had a couple Krakens, we had a couple quads, because you never know when something's going to go down. I know Peter lost a battery. You never know what's going to happen. You always want to plan for that. And if you have multiple different types of the hobby going on, we had multi-rotors being demonstrated. We had FPV, we had fixed wing, and then the helicopters too. And helicopters. Oh my yeah. gosh, he was amazing. Yeah. Heath. He Heath. was an amazing pilot. Good. Hats off to you, Heath. That's some of the best flying I've ever seen. Yep. And if you can get a spotter for every station, yeah, uh, someone, mostly. when you're, you're shuffling kids through, someone that can take the transfer from one child to the other, give them instruction, give them encouragement. Yes. One of the biggest things is this hobby is supposed to be fun. So try to always give encouragement. And if you're telling someone they're doing wrong, rather than doing that, tell them what they're doing right. Yep. And I use terms with younger kids, like instead of saying back pressure, tell them to pull towards the belly button. Tell yep. them gentle. Tell them, you know, all the way. Give them key words that will give them indications on how to uh, control the machine. Yep, keep it simple. And another great thing that we've been experiencing lately is wireless buddy box. Oh, well, I can't, can't be as <laughs> thankful enough for that technology. It's so so easy to use, and you can trade back and forth between the kid and, and, and yourself, yep. uh, depending on how far over the field they go. I know that Bixler was getting to be a tiny little speck in the sky a couple it times. It was getting very tiny. Yep. Now, we also have a lot of other videos about range checking, things like that. It's always a good idea, and with a wonderful invention called Google Earth, you can always check out your area ahead of time and even see what the weather's calling for, which way the wind's going to go, and know if you're going to be dealing with a problem. If you're going to be backed into a tight space, bring small, slower airplanes. If it's going to be a really windy day, pick an airplane that can handle the wind. We brought a couple uh, sets of goggles, and that always works well, but you want to make sure you're using a monitor when, you're, when you have a large group of people, especially kids, because they all want to see. Um, and goggles work well, and it's really immersive, but only one person gets to enjoy it at a time. Yep. Uh, we actually had two monitors, so they were watching the plane and the quad, and we, you could actually chase after each other, which is pretty, pretty cool. By introducing this hobby for the first time, a lot of people are going to want to know how to get into it. We have a really great beginner series out that you guys can check out and turn them towards. And also, go the extra step. If they're local to you and you want to build with them, the only thing that keeps you from getting the hobby is oftentimes doing it in a vacuum. Not yep. doing it with a friend, not doing it with someone else to give them the encouragement. Yeah, the experience is meant to be shared with multiple people. All right, friends, we want to thank you for watching. We hope that this gave you some tools that maybe inspired you to go out, connect with the community, show them this great hobby in a fun and exciting way. We'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. See you.